When Kids WB first began to air in 1995, it introduced five cartoons. Animaniacs, Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries, Pinky and the Brain, Earthworm Jim, and Freakazoid. Freakazoid was an amazing series that was ahead of its time. It was cancelled only after two seasons on Kids WB. It was funny, it was smart, and it caught the wrong age demographic. But we still loved it. So, here's the reason why Freakazoid is so freaking awesome. Freakazoid was created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, who also created the Batman the Animated Series. Bruce Timm left the show in the early stages of development because he and producer Steven Spielberg could not see eye to eye on where they wanted the series to go. Because of this, the writers only had 8 months to develop characters using model sheets left over by Bruce Timm to come up with scripts, record voices, animate the show, etc, etc, etc. Oh. I like that. Freakazoid was created because of a flaw in a computer trip. To activate this flaw, a certain sequence of keys needed to be typed in, followed by the pressing of the key delete. We interrupt this program to increase dramatic tension. Thank you, and now back to our program. They would often do fake advertisements for various items from the show, such as the Freakmobile. Freakazoid Freakmobile comes complete with boot kicking attachment and chubby little fanboy. Fingers not included, battery sold separately, song of the vocal bump, not available. We thought this would be a funny idea. Who knew? This has been a fake commercial, so don't buy anything and continue enjoying our fine programming. Legendary actor Ed Asner plays the officer Cosgrove. Not that you kids shouldn't go to the hospital if you ever need to. That's right, kids. Hospitals are places that make you well when you're feeling kind of irpy or have a foreign substance stuck up your nose. They'll fix you up and ship you out as good as new. Plus, the food's mighty fine. Arms of Kimball was once a model turned gangster. His arms are stuck because of years of forced modeling. Oh. Relaxovision. Good day. I'm H.A. Futterman, Professor of Broadcast Standards here at Kids WB, and you've just witnessed Relaxovision. Relaxovision is a Relaxovision is a process that inserts calming, mirthful images into scenes that might be too intense for the kiddos watching at home. Throughout the series, Freakazoid had a number of sidekicks, including Expandable Lad, Foamy the Freaka Dog. Handman and Fanboy, but not really. Freakazoid had two butlers. The first butler, Ingmar, was mute. Prepare the initiation test and holler when ready. What's taking my mute butler so long? Fanboy was a stereotype of how the public perceived comic book fans, sci fi fans, and Star Wars fans me and together we can end this destructive conflict and rule the galaxy as fanboy and son. No, I'll never join you. It is your destiny. Thanks to the internet now, we know better. Fandoms on the other hand. There were quite a number of villains that were created for this show. However, only a handful of them were actually used as Freakazoid's main foes. The others were reduced down to cameos, and the characters were never really fleshed out. Legendary actor Ricardo Montalban portrayed the villain Gutierrez in the series. The writers of the series have gone on record to say that they have intentionally written lines with funny sounding words for him so they can hear him say them. You weenie. A weenie? You are the weenie! Candlejack is the only villain that can capture you only if you say his name. Kind of like an opposite of Rumpelstiltskin. I'm gonna need more rope. Lord Bravery is a superhero who has a hard time establishing himself as a superhero. In fact, he has a hard time keeping his name as well. What kind of superhero would call himself Lord Smoked Meats and Fishes? Oh. One who wants to use the element of surprise. Screamovision. A byproduct of Holland's vast tulip industry, Screamovision heightens your viewing experience by prompting you when to scream. Let's try it now. Scream. <coughs> Good. Good. 
the network sensor was often the butt of jokes during the series' run. Everyone is okay! Mm -hmm. Including me. Professor Jones was played by Jonathan Harris, who also played Dr. Smith on Lost in Space, which became a running gag of the series. Not in television program with robot? Hush, you impertinent whelp. A lot of Freakazoid's jokes are seriously dated now. Better than a thigh master! What? Craig Ferguson provided the voice for the stereotypical Scotsman, Roddy McStew. <laughs> Cut the cut! The high schools in Freakazoid's universe throw parties for useless things like daylight savings times. Daylight savings time rules! It's rockin', man! Yeah! There was an alien named Moron. However, the network thought that this name might be a little bit too offensive, so they changed the name to Moron to Boron in later episodes. I am Moron. I come with an important message for all mankind. Freakazoid usually doesn't use fisticuffs or violence to defeat his foes. Most of the time, he either confuses them, mock their plans, or defeats them with some kind of cartoon gag. Freakazoid is so cartoony and overpowered that a lot of times the confrontation with the main villain doesn't even last a minute until they are defeated. Freakazoid is a show where the journey is more important than the finish. Say suffering succotash, I saw a giant mouse, go! Suffering succotash, I saw a giant mouse, damn! That didn't sound anything like Sylvester. Say silly sally sell sappy silver seashells in Seattle, go! Silly sally sell sappy si let me try again. Silly, 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 wait. Silly, 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 I wonder why that worked. Out of 24 episodes, the Loeb was the main villain of eight. However, he's one of the few villains that never had a proper origin story. I know it! Freakazoid's secret identity, Dexter Douglas, is seen less and less throughout the series. Note to myself, cut Dexter out of the main title, Bye bye Toby Danger was a one-time parody of Johnny Quest. It featured the voice talents of Scott Menville, Don Messick, and Granville Van Dusen. I'm gonna get hell for that one. All of which portrayed characters in Johnny Quest. Random distractions like this. <laughs> you want to see something strange and mystical? No! Believe it or not, Freakazoid was the fifth shortest series produced by Steven Spielberg, with only 24 episodes. The shorter series were, at number 4, Tootsylvania with 21 episodes, Tied for 2 and 3, Invasion America, and Pinky Elmira and the Brain, with 13 episodes each, and The Plucky Duck Show, which only had one original episode produced, while the rest of the series was comprised of Plucky Duck clips from Tiny Toons. I hope you feel this big. Emmett Nervan was a Where's Waldo type character in the series and is scattered throughout each episode. The credits during the first season will list how many times Emmett has appeared in an episode. You can do the same thing to save both fairies and superheroes. I saw this thing in a movie once and it worked. Who knows, it might work now. Clap. Clap as loud as you can. Let him know you're out there. Let him know you care. Ooh, ooh. Scream. Ah! Freakazoid had a lot of cutaway scenes in between segments. This includes Conversational Norwegian, Fanboy's Ode to Leonard Nimoy, The Introduction of Moron, Frenching with Freakazoid, or older superheroes reflecting on their past, and other random acts of stupidity. There were even some episodes during the first season that was comprised of nothing but these bits. 
Most of these never really went anywhere, and maybe because of some of these cutaways that is the reason why this show never lasted that long. What a disaster! Fat Boy and Boy Blubber was a one-shot cartoon parody of the old Adam West Batman series, where they would defend obese children from ridicule of bullies. <laughs> They won't be back! I got a stitch in my side and I've lost my freshness. Poor Bob Knight. Uh, prepare a sandwich for our guest. He must be hungry from his long journey. Now, Jocko, now! Eee. You'll have to excuse Jocko. He used to work for Bobby Knight. Freakazoid constantly forgets that he cannot fly. Fly! Freakazoid, you don't fly. Oh, right. The Huntsman was a superhero with epic buildup. His origin story was in the theme song. His theme song was epic. And he was also a superhero that did not have any villains to fight. Things so slow. <laughs> During the first episode of the first season, they did a parody of the Animaniacs theme song. During this parody, they showed a lot of the characters from the series, and there were a lot of characters that didn't even make it onto the series, including a female version of Freakazoid called Freakazette. The song, Am I Blue? Why don't you sing us a song? Am I blue? Am I blue? Ain't these tears in my eyes telling you? Yeah! You ought to pay attention instead of doing your little skits. Hero Boy is a parody of Astro Boy. Ow! my back! Cut it out! Cosgrove and Professor Jones do not get along, and oftentimes Cosgrove would do something to frighten Professor Jones or bully him. Could you do me a favor? Go up to that car and tap on the glass. I'll get you for this, Cosgrove! The honeymoon scene after both of Freakazoid's hands got married. I kid you not. The show predicted its cancellation. Strength and speed will only take you so far, lad. It got me a second season. You can't count on that! Networks are fickle! They can drop you like a man with big oak fingers! This was the last episode to be aired on Kids WB before it was pulled from the network. Oftentimes, the series will do elaborate credit scenes parodying movies. They always end with Rena McKayer as the Hopping Woman. Yes, Dance of Doom, starring Leonard Rhombus, Kipton Tang, and Weena Mercator as the Hopping Woman. Hot Rods from Heck, starring Ruth Canto, Mimsy Lee, and Weena Mercator as the Hopping Woman. Freakazoid showing an alien the do's and don'ts of Earth. With scissors. Stay out of your father's underwear drawer. Diane Sawyer acts sincere, but she's actually faking it. Eating carrots gives you x-ray vision. Mmm, x-ray, good. Never try to catch a roadrunner, it's impossible. Okay. Thanks. Mwah. Scream. Ah! Knock it off. Hug bees. Hug bees! Hug bees! Hug bees! Moose! Professor Jones' theory about Nor Rayburn being kidnapped by pixie people. Ooh, yum! 
Now, one day, the Pixie King was crushed by a boulder. He was killed, but a new leader had to be chosen. So they came up here, kidnapped Norm Abram, then took him down to their cavern, where he's now <laughs> uh, the Pixie King. The song, I'm a Tugboat, Call Me Mel. I'm a tugboat. Ow! Ah, oh, that was a tough one, because I just made up that song. See ya! Whenever Freakazoid loses a sidekick, he would drown himself in papaya juice. I said, give me another one. Curse your tiny paper hat! If I want to blitz myself into some papaya-induced hallucination, that's my business. The show will make you question, is this really for kids? And on behalf of the United Kingdom, I want to personally thank you, Freakazoid, in a very personal way if you catch my drift. Yeah, well, cool your jets, princess, and wait your turn. He's taken. Sharon! Why, you tramp? Who are you calling a tramp, you stuck-up little... How dare you! Come on, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tribute to how the Grinch stole Christmas. You're a meanie! Nasty lobe, you're as bad as villains get. Your head is really mushy cause you haven't got a skull, nasty lobe. Why, I wouldn't sit next to you on an airplane if, if there was a seat next to you on an airplane. One shot short, Lawn Gnomes is a parody of gargoyles. We are Lawn Gnomes! This was Don Messick's last cartoon voiceover before he died in 1997. He also provided iconic voices for Boo Boo Bear and Scooby Doo. I tried, Ash. To succeed would take more resources than planet Earth can supply me. Say, is there any place open where we can get a midnight snack? <laughs> The show constantly cuts out to live action movies, clips, and TV series. Yoo Look up, brothers! Look who's here for you! Hello, boys. Scream. In the summer of 1995, the series advertised the show using parodies of current commercials. The reason behind this is because they did not have any footage to use of Freakazoid to advertise the show. That's why we don't have any clips to show from the next episode of Freakazoid. We'd better get to work. So fade out already. Freakazoid's origin story was also the longest episode of the series, spanning one and a half episodes. He says he's very sad. Oh, go away. Sergeant Mike Cosgrove is Freakazoid's best friend and often gives the teen hero fun little distractions like... Hey Freakazoid, wanna go out for a mint? Wanna go see a bear ride a motorcycle? I've got a two-for-one coupon for the mud baths. You wanna go build a go-kart? You wanna go to the Honey Harvest Festival in Acton? You wanna head over to the Great Hall of Spackle? Wanna go to Spamoni Land? You wanna go out for a snow cone? The show would often make fun of things that happen behind the scenes, which includes making fun of the writers, interns, and money issues. We've succeeded in embarrassing the network into giving us more special effects money. Thank you for pretending. You can stop now. Freakazoid was a G version, or a PG version, of Deadpool, as he constantly broke the fourth wall. Mr. Camera Guy, zip pan to the next scene! The other scene! Am I working alone here? Freakazoid's motivation are as not as pure as one would think for a children's show. Palm trees, hula girls, pineapples, hula girls, surfboards, hula girls, hula girls, hula girls. Freakazoid is his own worst enemy, as he sometimes allows the villain to catch him. Dumb, dumb, dumb! Never tell the villain how to trap you in a cage! You probably shouldn't have helped us build it either. I know! Dumb! 
The show's announcer, Joe Leahy, will periodically interrupt the show, either cutting to an announcement card or showing up on set himself, usually to humorous results. The following scene has been deleted by the network censors because it shows a pup making dog water. Apparently, up to a point, Cosgrove and Ronnie McStew were the only ones who knew Freakazoid's secret identity. Freakazoid, we're gonna rescue your family, right? I mean, it's not like anyone here doesn't know you're Dexter Douglas. You're Dexter Douglas? Dexter Creepy Douglas is Freakazoid? Cosgrove? Sorry, kid. I thought Steph knew. I mean, she's your girlfriend and all. I trusted you and you just blurted it out! You should have checked with me first! A parody of legendary host Paul Harvey sometimes tells the origin story of the main villains. And from that day forward, he was known as... Longhorn. And now you know the rest of the backstory. Good day! The answering machine gag. You've done this. You know you've done this. If you said you haven't done this, then you lie. Yeah, I got the machine. It's always on. Hello? You're there. I know you're there. Pick up. Come on, pick up. In one episode of the second season, Freakazoid developed psychic powers. However, the subject was never brought up again after that one episode. The reason why? It was the second to last episode of the series. Whoa! The writers spent a week trying to figure out how Dexter would turn into Freakazoid. They got scolded for this because they should have been writing episodes. So they went with a simple catchphrase, Freak Out, for the change. Scream! Jack Valenti explained the motion picture rating system. But if the movie's rated NC-17, that means that kids can't get in. Only adults can get in. Mom doesn't want to see adult movies. But Grandpa was in the Army, and he's not bothered very much, and so he decides to stay along with Sergeant Scruffy, who's just a dumb dog anyway. The delivery of this line here. And you know what? I don't think I want to be your friend no more. Hmm. Freakazoid's origin story was actually as a sixth episode of the season instead of the first. Would you please stop that infernal raking? It's driving me crazy! Sheesh! Gutierrez's all-time favorite bloopers. Now look at this duck. It's just a duck. Oh no, my friend. It's a plain old duck. No, it's a very special duck because there is a guy in it. This is an accurate overreaction of when an amusement park takes out a classic ride. It's just like at Disneyland. Not anymore, I'm afraid. Well, at least they still have those little motorboats. No! Not the boats! Yeah, they are. I understand your pain. But you will see, the Imagineers at Disney will come up with something even better, yeah? <laughs> How come you fired us off the show? Since the show's format changed in the second season from an anthology series to a full half-hour episode, focusing more on Freakazoid, Secondary characters like Lord Bravery and the Huntsman were dropped because of these changes. Duh! I missed a spot! Duh, no luck! Duh! Well, at least they're still on the payroll! There is a superhero, supervillain, all-star benefit softball game. This is a baseball game! Play ball! Come on, Huntsman, what's the call? I turned away to have some berry water and I missed the play. Done the luck. Done. During the second season of Freakazoid, Kids WB decided to rearrange their Saturday morning lineup. Under the banner Big Kids Go First, they moved Freakazoid from 11 a.m. to 8 a.m. Unfortunately, Big Kids tend to sleep in on Saturdays. So again, they moved the series to Friday afternoons under the banner Freak Out Fridays. Shame on you for being so snippy and rude. Go! Boo on you! Boo on you! I don't get your jokes either! Freakazoid was the first time 
many of us ever heard of the word and the description of the word toyetic. Toyetic is a word created by marketing people. It means an object or device featured in a cartoon that could easily become a mass-produced toy. The episodes The Cloud and Candlejack were spliced together to make an extra 25th episode for the series. I'm sorry! Born the Unspeakable was a parody of The Demon Cthulhu. Hey you! I am Born the Unspeakable! The skulls of those who defy me bleach in the suns of a hundred worlds. And you are? Cosgrove. And if you move, I'll pop you in the lip. The reason why Cosgrove never got married. Hey, Cosgrove, how come you never got married? Because I like meat too much. You could be married and still eat a lot of meat. I didn't know that. Wait, wait, hey, hold it, enough! Hey, pal, I've had just about enough of this relaxovision thing. Oh, yeah? What are you gonna do about it? Ow! Ooh! Ow! 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 Ooh! Ow! Hey! Nor Rabram getting aroused by a description of a piece of wood. Beautiful, isn't it? Milled from the finest birch. Not a flaw, not one imperfection. Absolutely perfect. I said knock it off! When Freakazoid aired, there were two other comic superhero cartoons on the air. Fox began airing The Tick a year earlier, and CBS began to air a cartoon version of The Mask, which was a less zany version of Freakazoid the same year. All three went on to be cult favorites. Where? I don't see anything. Booga booga booga! Ah! The show would often sneak in caricatures of the show's writers and staff including the show's executive producer, Steven Spielberg. Cosgrove returned in the second season with a larger role and a new catchphrase. Top where you are! Hey, cut it out. It's your fault. So, what are your favorite memories of Freakazoid? Did you enjoy this video? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and subscribe! Freakazoid is owned by Warner Brothers and is currently available on DVD. You can find it on Amazon. Be sure to support the official release. I'm Toonamp. Thank you for tuning in and it's time for me to tune out. We'll